Our reading, Our reading today, today is in, in John, John chapter, chapter 17. 17. After, After Jesus, Jesus said this, he looked towards, towards heaven, heaven and prayed, Father, the hour, the hour has come. come. Glorify, glorify your, your Son, son that, your that your Son may glorify you. you. For you granted him authority, him authority over, over all people, people that, he that he might give, give eternal, eternal life to, to all those, those you've given, given him. Now, now this, this is eternal, eternal life, that they, they know, know you, the only, only true God, God and Jesus Christ, Christ whom you have sent. sent. I brought, I brought you glory on earth by finishing, finishing the work you gave me to do. do. And now, and now Father, Father, glorify, glorify me, me in your presence, presence with the glory I had, I had in you before the world began. began. I have, I have revealed, revealed to you those, those who gave, gave me out of the world. world. They, were they were yours, you gave, gave them to me, and they, they obeyed your word. Your word. Now, now they know that everything you have given me comes, comes from, from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, me and they accepted them. They, they knew with certainty, certainty that, that I came, came from you, and they believed, believed that you'd sent, sent me. I pray, I pray for them. I'm not, I'm not praying, praying for the world, but for those you've given, given me. For they are yours. yours. All, all I have is yours, and all you have is mine. And, mine. and glory, glory has come to me through them. them. I will I remain, remain in the world, world no longer, longer but they, they are still, still in the world, and I'm coming, coming to you. Holy, Holy Father, Father, protect them, them by the power, power of your name, name the name, name you gave me, so that they may, may be one, as we, as we are one. While, While I was with them, I protected them, them and kept them safe, safe. by the name, name you gave me. None, none has been, been lost except, except the one doomed, doomed to destruction, so desperate. I'm coming, I'm coming to you now, now but, but I say these things, things while I'm still, still in the world, world so, that so that they may have, have full measure, measure of my joy within them. them. I've, given I've given them your, them your word, and, and the word has hated, hated them. them. For they, for they, not, op, for they for are, are not of the world anymore, than I am of the world. world. My, my prayer, prayer is not that, that you take them out of the world, world but that, that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the word is truth. As you, As you have sent, sent me into the world, the world I, have I have sent them, them into the world. world. For them, For them I, I sanctify myself, myself that, that they too may be truly, truly sanctified. My prayer, my prayer is not, not for them alone. alone. I, pray I pray also for those, for those who, who believe in me through, through their, their message, message that, that all, all of them, them may be one. one. Father, Father, just, just as you and you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me that they, they may, may be as one, as one and as we, we are one. one. I, I in them and, and you in me, so that, so that they may be brought to a complete, complete unity. unity. Then, then the world will know that you have sent, sent me, and have loved, loved them even as you have loved, loved me. me. Father, Father, I want, I want those, those you have, have given, given me to be with me, me where, where I am, and to and see my, my glory, glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, through, through, though the world does not know you, I know, I know you, and they, and they know that you have sent, sent me. I have, I have made, made you known to them, them and will continue, continue to make me known, known in order that, that the love you have for me may be in them, them and, that and that I myself, myself may be in them. them. Well, well, good, good afternoon. afternoon. And, and uh, it's, it's sweet, sweet to... to Speak to people, people that, that I can see. see. Nice, nice to actually see your faces, faces but, but uh, uh, it's, it's a start, start anyway. anyway. So, so uh, welcome, welcome to Hope Church. My name is Tim, Tim and, and I'm one of my pastors, pastors Mark, Mark, who works with me. me. Uh, and the elders is uh, uh, on holiday, holiday with, with his family. family. Shall we, shall we pray. pray? Thank you, Father, that Jesus is praying for us. And we do want to thank you that we're not left to our own devices. We pray, we pray that as we hear, hear him pray, pray that, we that we will be very, very much strengthened, strengthened in the tasks task which we have to do, the calling which we have, which, which uh, is, is a hard, hard one, one, a very, very high one, one, very important one. 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 And, and uh, uh, so, so Father, Father, please, please give, us give us the strength that we need. need. And thank, thank you again, again that we come, come together, together and listen to your word. word. In, in Jesus', Jesus name. name, Amen. Amen. And, and uh, welcome, welcome to you too, too, if you're, you're uh, live, live dreaming, dreaming or catching, catching up later, later on. on. Uh, we're, looking we're looking at, at John's Gospel, Gospel and, and we're, we're taking chapter, chapter Sunday, Sunday and we've got to chapter, chapter 17, 17 this, this great, great prayer of, of Jesus. Jesus. 
At the height of his popularity, Liam Gallagher was asked for his reaction to all the fans that were milling around his house, just waiting for him to appear. And he said this. Spend all, all your days, days on your, your hands, hands and knees, knees worshipping someone, someone you can't see if it makes, makes you happy. I prefer, I prefer to buy someone's, someone's track who is there, there. And, and who you can, can camp outside their house, house. And, and you, you can, can say, say sign, sign this, please. please. And, and there's a problem, there's a problem isn't, isn't there, there with, with God, God that, that people, people don't, don't know God, God they can't, can't see God. God. And actually, and actually it, it seems, seems worse than, than that. that. It, it seems, seems that, that most, most people, people don't, don't want to know, know God. God. I mean, I, I went, went out, out with a, a brother, brother with a believer a, um, uh, on, on Tuesday, Tuesday with some of our neighbours who went, who went to, to uh, golf, golf clubs around, around here for coffee. coffee. And, and uh, my uh, friend, friend, he laid, laid down, down the bait. bait. He, he said how God, God had helped him in his life. And he asked if he could pray for any of the neighbours. And, and uh, later, later one of the neighbours said, oh, I, I do, do like, like the organ. organ. I said, well, I, well, I know someone, someone who played play the organ, organ and, and I'll, I'll get to play the organ for you if you come, come to church. church. But, but none, none of them were biting, biting at, at all. all. They, they really, really didn't, didn't want, want to know God, God or to really, really come, come anywhere, anywhere near, near him, it seemed. And yet, eternal life, as Jesus says here, verse 3, is to know you, God, and the one that you have sent. And if, and if people, people don't, don't know God, God they have, have no eternal, eternal life. life. So, so we've got, got to uh, chapter, chapter 17, 17 and the countdown, countdown is nearly complete. complete. The, the hour is just, just about, about to strike. strike. Jesus', Jesus hour, hour, he knows, he knows is the hour, hour when, when he, will he will be betrayed, betrayed arrested, arrested, tried, tried tortured, tortured, sentenced, sentenced to, death, to death, and the, and the next, next day, day Crucified. crucified. That, that is, is just, just around, around the corner. corner. But, in but in spite, spite of, all of all that, that it's, it's actually, actually Jesus, Jesus who is comforting, comforting his, his friends, friends, his disciples, disciples rather, rather than, than them comforting, comforting him. him. And, and uh, he, he tells, tells them he's got to go, to go back, back to the Father, the but he assures them that he is not abandoning them as, as orphans. orphans. He, he and, and his, his Father are going to come to them by the Holy, the Holy Spirit, Spirit, by, by the, the Comforter. Though the world, the world would hate them, them, he was, he was going, going to get a place ready, ready for them. them. And, and the, the one thing, thing he really, really wanted from them was that they, they would, would stay, stay together in, in loving, loving unity. unity. Now, now all, all of this we get, get in John, John chapter, chapter 17, 17 in the prayer. There's nothing, nothing really, really very new about, about the material here. Yeah. The prayer, the prayer is like, like a, the, the drawstring string on the bag. bag. Everything's, Everything's in the bag. bag. And then, and then Jesus, Jesus sort of pulls, pulls the string, string and pulls, pulls everything together, together that he wants, wants to tell his disciples just before he leaves them. And he puts them in the form of this prayer. And the prayer has a point. And the point is that the people of the world will come to know God. Now that seems a little bit unlikely, doesn't it? Um, one, because as we've already said, most of the world, it seems, doesn't want to know God. And secondly, when, when um, God, God makes, makes himself, himself known, known it, seems it seems to be, to be in a very, very weird, weird way, way, at least, at least to, the to the world. I mean, I mean Jesus, Jesus says, says I've come, come to... Do you need, do you need me to do, do anything, anything, guys, or not? Or not? Let's just, just go to this one, that's all right. So Jesus, Jesus says, I've come, come to, make to make your, your name known, Father. Father. But, but the household, the household names, names of our day and age, age people, people like, like Bill, Bill Gates or Mark Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg or Jeff, Jeff Bezos, Bezos, they've, they've become, become household names in the conventional, conventional way, way, haven't they? they? They have, they have just, just been, been very, very, very successful, successful and built big, big business, business empires. empires. They've, They've made, made a whole lot, lot of money. money. Now, now they're, they're very, very, very powerful, powerful people. people. Everybody, Everybody knows them. them. 
But when, but when God, God wants, wants to make, to make himself, himself known, known, he does, he does so, so through his, his son, son on a cross, cross through, through a, a book, book that was written, written 2,000 years, years ago, ago and, and through, through a, bunch a bunch of people, people that, that the world, world would look, look twice, twice at. at. That's, That's a, a strange, strange way, way really, really of trying to make, make yourself known, known isn't, isn't it? it? And that's why Jesus prays. And yet, Jesus is the one whose prayers are always answered. The last time he prayed publicly was at the graveside of a friend of his who had just died, Lazarus. And uh, Jesus said, Father, I'm praying to you. He said, you are the one who, you always hear me. He says, uh, I'm saying this for the benefit of the people who are listening to my prayer now. Now that's a staggering claim, isn't it? Father, I know you always hear me. And uh, it's the sense of hear as, are you hearing me? Are you responding to what I'm saying? Jesus knows that his Father always answers him. He always responds to his prayers. He is the one whose prayers are always answered. And the purpose of this prayer is that people in the world might come to know God, whoever they are, whether they're Eskimos or Europeans or Eritreans, whether they're needy people or nerdy people or even nasty people, whether they're old people, young people, teens, tots, grannies, whatever, that people in the world might know God through Jesus. And that is the point of this prayer, and this prayer is going to be answered. And uh, Jesus says uh, at the end, verse uh, 25, Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known. That's what the prayer is about. Um, now, the first part of the prayer is Jesus prays that God his Father might glorify his Son in order that his Son, that's himself, might bring glory to Glory. It's a big word, isn't it? It means the public display of inner quality. And God is absolute quality because God alone is perfection. And glory to God is a bit like the rays are to the sun. The sun is there, it's a long way away, but because of the rays, the glory of the sun, we know and benefit from the sun. It's public display. Now normally when we talk about glory, we mean it in the sense of, uh, as was said, uh, the glory that was Greece and the grandeur that was Rome. Something big and massive and impressive and powerful and beautiful and rich. Is that what Jesus is praying for here? He says, Father, glorify your Son. Lord God, I, Father, I've been in disguise far too long now. Just take the wraps off and we'll show them all who we are, we are so powerful and mighty. Is that what Jesus is praying for here? Well, not really, because the greatest glory of God is shown in the cross, in utter weakness and humiliation. Jesus knows that the hour has come for the ultimate act of courage and self-sacrifice and humility and love and he's praying father help me to go through with the cross to die for the sins of my people so that the authority you've given me will mean that i can grant my people eternal life that's the way i want to glorify you and that's the way i want you to glorify me to help me go through with this act of love and to bring me through the other side. Now we're standing here in John 17 in a very holy place where overhearing Son, the Son of God, speaking with his Father. And there's so much here that's just mutual between them. They obviously have 
has so much love and regard and esteem for each other. The son just wants to bring glory to his father. The father just wants to shower glory on his son. And there's so much giving between them. The father gives his son authority, verse 2. The father gives the son his followers, his dear children. They're the ones you've given to me, says Jesus. The son uh, has received from his father the word that his father has given him and glory. And they share everything. Verse 10, Jesus says, all I have is yours and all you have is mine. I mean, everything we have belongs to God, but not everything that God has belongs to us. That would be an amazing thing to say. But Jesus, the Son of God, can say, verse 15, all that belongs to the Father is mine. Wow. So this is a very, very close relationship, and it's uh, uh, almost, uh, uh, you know, it's difficult to actually overhear this and not think, you know, I, ne I need to hide away. To overhear this conversation is just the most amazing thing in the world. We'll concentrate and focus on where the text focus, though, the second part of the prayer that Jesus prays for his disciples. So he says, Father, I want the world to know you by protecting your own in a dangerous world. Verses 6 to 19. Jesus now prays for the men that he's going to be leaving behind. He says, I'm not going to pray for the world because the world is hopeless, actually. As Adam was saying, the only hope for the world is that it ceases to become the world. What does Jesus mean by the world? Well, he means human society, which is arranged in such a way that God is left out. And that's the world that we live in every day. If you go into your hospital tomorrow and start talking about God, you will be shunned because that is part of the world. It's society arranged with God excluded. That's increasingly so in, in our own nation and world. But it's true, say, in the way in which we arrange our business affairs and politics and education and everything. And Jesus says, I'm not praying for the world because the world needs to stop being the world if it's to have any hope of knowing God and experiencing and enjoying eternal life. But he does pray for his disciples. Now, when you think of the disciples, I wonder what you think of, how you'd assess them. You might think, well, they're not really the bravest group of blokes, and they're certainly not the brightest, and they're a bit like us, I guess. But what does Jesus say about them? Well, he says, uh, you gave them to me. They're your gift. And um, he says, they received the word that I gave them, and they became convinced that you had sent me, and they became loyal followers of mine, true believers. And um, glory has come to me through them. He really says that in verse 10. I've got more glory because of my followers, this bunch of blokes who have been following me for these last three years. Now that is quite extraordinary, isn't it? I mean, it sounds like the teacher assessment is far, far, far higher than our own self-assessment of ourselves as Jesus' disciples or our assessment of our brothers and sisters. And this teacher assessment, Father, they're your gift to me. I love them. They're so precious. They're so valuable. They have believed me. They follow me. They're convinced that you sent me. Amazing. This teacher assessment is never going to be appealed against. It's never going to be downgraded. That is... God's assessment of you if you are a disciple of Jesus Christ. Wow. Jesus tells them this um, so that they might know of his love for them and how highly he values them. And uh, he says, I gave them your word and set them apart from the world. This is the meaning of the word sanctify or make holy, to set apart for a special purpose. I think probably the 
one of the better illustrations of this is a toothbrush. Um, I could show you my toothbrush here if I had it. And um, I use my uh, toothbrush, nobody else uses it unless Anne cleans her teeth in the dark in the night or something, I don't know. And um, it's only used for one purpose, and that's for brushing my teeth. I mean, Anne was uh, cleaning the curtain blind uh, this week because it got very grubby where obviously we put our hands on it. Uh, and uh, she could have said to me, uh, oh, uh, Tim, could I use your toothbrush to, so I can bleach the, uh, the curtain blind uh, puller with it? And um, I said, yeah, okay, sure. You know, I mean, if there's any bleach left on it, it'll help cure coronavirus and wipe out the virus. No, I didn't say that because my toothbrush is used for one thing to clean my teeth. And that's the reason I keep it as clean as I possibly can. Now you and I are set apart for one purpose, and that is to serve God and to make him known in this world. And that's a very special purpose. And that means we need to keep ourselves as clean as we possibly can be for his use. Jesus set us apart by his word. It was when we read the Bible, when we heard it announced by somebody or explained by a friend, that as we heard the word of God, it was as though we were getting pulled out of the world and getting drawn into Christ. And it was an extraordinary experience. It happened by the word. And this word keeps us near to Christ, and it keeps us set apart and clean and pure for Christ. Your word is truth. Sanctify them in the truth. That's Jesus' prayer. And don't forget, he's the one whose prayers are always answered. And then we are sent into the world with the word. We're set apart from the world by the word, but we're sent into the world with the word. Verses 15 to 19. Now, when Jesus was with his disciples, he kept them safe by his Father's name, he says. He didn't allow them to get killed or lost, except for Judas, who was always going to betray him. And we have a lovely example of this in the next chapter, in chapter 18. Uh, there, Jesus is in the garden, and the police are uh, arriving to uh, arrest him. And Jesus goes out in the night and says, who are you looking for? And they say, Jesus of Nazareth. And uh, Jesus says, I am he. And they all fall back down to the ground like the Keystone Cops. They all fall over this arrest party. And then they stagger up to their feet again. And Jesus says, just take me in. Just let these men go. If you're looking for me, just arrest me. And um, this happened, we read, verse 9 of chapter 18, so that the words he had spoken would be fulfilled. I have not lost one of those you gave me. You see, if Jesus had let the whole group of disciples get arrested, get taken in, they would either have all been killed or they would have had to have denied him. And Jesus wasn't prepared for either to happen. So he says, I've kept them safe. And there's a tangible example of this in the next chapter. And Jesus is responsible for the safety of his disciples. But now he hands them into his father's care. The world is a very dangerous place and they will need to be protected. And the world is a dangerous place for us as well. And it's a bit of a dilemma, isn't it? It's a bit like the dilemma we have at the moment. Uh, I mean, do we um, stay uh, in to stay slim or go out to help out? It, it's difficult to know, isn't it? We need to be out there spending our money or the economy collapses and many, many jobs are lost. But if we do that, we expose ourselves to a virus. Last week, uh, there was the tragedy of Senator Herman Cain who died 18 days ago. He went to the Trump Indoor Rally in uh, Tulsa. He was very disdainful of any safety precautions. Nine days ago, he was diagnosed with COVID-19, and nine days after that, he died. And we can't afford to be complacent about being in the world because we're exposed to a far deadlier virus than corona. 
and that is the virus of sin. And Jesus knows that the devil is after us, he's coming for us. We've got our flesh, which always is tempted and drawn by sin. And we've got the world, which is egging us on as well. And without Father's protection and care, we've got no chance. There's certainly no room for complacency. The world hates us, sin is crouching, and yet Jesus prays that we will be kept safe. And he is the one whose prayers are always answered. Now you might say uh, Jesus is praying for the men in the room. Yes, he is, and uh, there's no doubt in his mind that his prayer will be answered and that they will be successful and they will preach the message that he has given to them and other people will believe. But Jesus is praying exactly the same thing for us in our generation too. And that's very encouraging. The Scottish pastor, Murray McShane, who died when he was in his late 20s, uh, said, if I could hear Christ praying for me in the next room, I would not fear a million enemies. But it makes no difference because he is praying for me. And we go out into the world tomorrow knowing that Jesus is praying for us and he's committing us to the Father's name for safety and protection. And we need to be out there because the world needs to know God and needs to believe the message that he's entrusted to us. But uh, thirdly, verses 20 to 26, Jesus prays that Father would be known by uniting believers in God's love, verses 20 to 26. And now Jesus is praying specifically for all of us. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. And what does he pray? Verse 21, the bottom line, that all of them may be one. He prays for complete oneness between Christians. He prays for loving harmony between us. Now, why does Jesus pray for this? Is it just that we love it when uh, our kids all get along? You know, it's mum's dream, isn't it? Uh, everyone's home for Christmas. It's going to be one big happy family in your mum's dreams. Is that why he's praying for this? Well, it's more. You see, their oneness, verse 21, is to be based on the oneness that father and son have. May they be one, just as you are in me and I am in you. In the same way, may they be one in us. So God has a master plan. And the master plan is that in this very divided universe, he will bring everything together under one head, and that is Christ Jesus, his son. And because he is our Lord, we will all be united together. And there will be a harmony as we all take our right place under the headship of Christ. You see, the problem with this world is tribalism, isn't it? That's the real problem in Lebanon. Everybody's split up into different tribes and then the politicians get more and more corrupt. They do favors for their own tribes and their tribes pay them some more money and then they do some more favors. And nobody's acting for the good of the country as a whole. It's the problem in Yemen. It's the problem everywhere, actually. Our own society is getting more and more and more tribal. And in our own tribes, we have our own stories, which we listen to. And in our stories, our tribe is inevitably the hero and the victim. And the other tribe is inevitably the oppressor. And then we start to divide. And God's plan is to pull us together and to make us one. And where he starts is the local church. Because guess what? We are the pilot project. And if the oneness of God and the love of God, father for son, son for father, can be shown in our church, then everyone will see the gospel's working. 
people are trying to test a vaccine at the moment, aren't they? Is it going to work? Is it not going to work? The whole history of the future of the world seems to depend on whether this vaccine will work. I tell you, the whole history of the universe depends on whether God's pilot project will work of bringing us all together, uniting us, even though we're very, very diverse, so that we love each other, so we put the interests of the other before our own. If that happens, if people see how much we love one another, how united we are, how we serve one another, how we learn from one another, how we defer to one another, if that happens, the gospel is working. And everything depends upon this for God's plan for the world. That's why our oneness is so absolutely vital. Very, very unnatural. You won't see this anywhere else in the world. I mean, uh, what did um, Hugh Edwards say this week? He said you need to be a street fighter to survive in the BBC because everybody's always fighting their own corners and positions. It's all a matter of who can get the power. That, that's not because the BBC is especially wicked. It's just because it's the world. And we've got to be different. And we've got to be better. And we've got to love each other and serve each other the same way that the Son of God has loved and served us. Well, that's an amazingly high calling, and it's an amazingly hard one as well. So why don't uh, we just bow our heads and pray, and uh, we'll ask that the Lord will help us to do so. Um, I'll give you uh, 30 seconds or so to pray for your own part in this, and then I'll pray, and then Chuka will sing to us. Father God, we so much want people to know you, know who you truly are, the true God, the one who loves us and serves us by your Son, the one who has been prepared to take our punishment and judgment for our sins, the one who has loved us like no one else ever could love us, and the one who's called us to be his family together. Father, uh, we long that the world should know you. And if that seems unlikely, Lord, we thank you that it will happen because of the prayer of your son, the Lord Jesus. And we do ask that when they look at us, they will see that the gospel is working, that we will make your message believable to people, that they won't be able to deny that the gospel of Jesus Christ works to bring harmony and reconciliation in this world. Well, please forgive us where we have caused or brought about any division, where we have acted selfishly, where we are arrogant, which we all are to a certain extent. And Lord, please, Make us one and answer this prayer. And may we, like Jesus, glorify you. For we ask in his name. Amen.